Data is inherently valuable in today's digitally transformed and connected world. Similar to your family photos, works of art, or your medical history, some data is precious, irreplaceable. Some data needs to be always available. These mission-critical data are needed in real time and all the time for applications such as banking, stock trading, autonomous driving, etc. These requirements drive the need for fault-tolerant, high durability, and high availability storage. Today, a common metric to represent durability and availability is using the number of nines. As an example, for durability, five nines represent losing 10,000 files out of 10 million files per year, and nine nines represent losing just one file every 100 years. For availability, five nines translates to about five minutes of downtime per year, and nine nines translate to just 30 milliseconds. To achieve a high number of nines, storage systems must have high mean time between failures, and when a failure occurs, the systems must have fast recovery times or low mean time to recover, leading to high mean time to data loss. To understand mean time to data loss, we must first understand failure domains. For example, the storage client, the network, the storage target, and within the storage target, the storage controller and the disks are all different failure domains. Local faults and failures are inevitable, but to ensure that these faults and failures do not impact overall durability and availability from a user's perspective, some type of redundancy mechanism is typically put in place. Zooming in on the storage target, one of the simplest strategies to protect data and maintain high availability is to replicate identical copies of the data. This is also commonly known as mirroring. It is important that the redundant copies live in different failure domains so that errors are confined within the domain and do not impact the other domains. This technique requires very little processing or compute capabilities, but clearly this is an expensive solution. A different technique is through the use of a parity code. In the most basic example, let's assume the parity code is the XOR of D1 and D2. By storing the results of the XOR, we can reconstruct either D1 or D2 based on the results of XOR. Here is a further generalization of this concept, where data is divided into four chunks, and two different linear equations are used to form two unique parity codes. Using this scheme, if D3 and D4 go down, the data can be reconstructed by solving the linear equations represented in the parity codes. Fundamentally, all you need is basic math skills in linear algebra. However, for practical implementation, extrapolated to large amounts of data, you use a branch of algebra called Galois field. This scheme is essentially the foundation of erasure coding. Data is cut into n chunks and the parities are erasure codes. The number of parity blocks correspond to the number of failures the system can resist. In this example, where n equals 4 and p equals 2, the system can tolerate up to two failures, similar to triple replication, but only requires an overhead capacity of 50% versus 200% for triple replication. Let's look at a quantitative example. This example shows how both schemes can sustain two node failures and achieve similar durability metrics. And in this scheme where P equals four, the system can sustain four failure nodes. But now compare the TCO benefits. With triple replication, your system can sustain two failure nodes. With erasure coding where N is four and P is two, you can sustain two failure nodes, achieve similar high durability, but at half the storage capacity versus replication. With erasure coding where N is eight and P is four, you achieve significantly higher durability at half the storage capacity versus replication. Sounds like a really promising technology. Too good to be true? Is erasure coding used pervasively today? Today, erasure coding is mostly used on cold data. Why not hot and warm data? It turns out the answer is quite simple. Recall that replication is a simple, straightforward technique with low compute requirements. Erasure coding, on the contrary, is a compute-intensive and network-intensive technique. Let's look at the write and read path separately. During data write to storage, data needs to be encoded to generate the parity. These computations are a compute-intensive process. Every time data changes, the parity needs to be recalculated. 
During data read from storage, if there are no issues with data corruption or storage failures, data read can be fairly straightforward. However, when data integrity is lost, reconstruction needs to happen. Reconstruction is both a compute and network intensive process. Erasure coding is certainly more complex to implement compared to simple replication. Here is where Fungible comes in. Fungible's data processing unit implements erasure coding on specialized dedicated hardware supporting various schemes. The DPU enables network fabric that is high bandwidth, low latency, allowing for inline erasure coding at line rate. The storage software that comes with the DPU offers an intent API, which abstracts away any complexities related to the implementation of erasure coding. You only need to decide the level of durability your applications require. In current systems, different techniques are used to provide high durability for data of different temperature. With the DPU, erasure coding can be applied to data of all temperature, resulting in a more cost-effective, yet more durable and available storage systems.